everybody welcome to Rana's Radar as you can see behind me I'm amongst European classics today we're here at wheels across the pond and the cars are just driving in so this is a great time to see them cruise in and then they're gonna stay stationary so then we're gonna get some great interviews and get to know some European classics so I'm super excited about that and hope you guys enjoy it here we are at wheels across the pond You have my slip. I need to know what class I'm in. So we're here with David and uh, we're going to have a chat with him and see about his awesome classic behind me. How's it going David? Very good, thank you. So okay, so what we have here is a 2008 GT3 Cup car that was raced by Sean Edwards in the Super Cup series back in the 2000s. This was the last car that Sean Edwards professionally drove um, and uh, you know he was a superstar man, rising star. This guy was uh, top notch, a wonderful mate to be around. Um, this car is preserved and it's it, exactly how it was uh, when he drove it. Um, it's being preserved by Orbit Racing here in um, Palm Beach. And uh, we figured we'd bring it out, show the world what he, uh, what he was doing. Okay, so for those of us who don't know, like me, so tell us a bit more about Sean and his racing. Sean was a rising superstar in the, in the Porsche series. Um, uh, started out really young in karting, uh, won some big time races, uh, and uh, was in the Super Cup Series uh, this year, uh, sponsored by Abu Dhabi. Um, tragically, Sean Edwards died in a car crash while he was coaching another gentleman. Oh, wow. And so his career was cut short. Sean Edwards was a superstar, and he would have been a, a, a top level, probably Formula One racer at one day. Um, and it was sad to see him go. That's, a, that's such a tragedy, honestly. A life taken too soon. Um, and we see that sometimes with the race cars, especially when they're on the rise as well. Now, this is a very rare car. Yes. One of only 30, you said, ever Yeah, this, was, this car was one of 30 built. <clears throat> we think there's probably only eight to 10 of these left in the world. 
this design. This is a Super Cup car. So there was a Super Cup series that was only a 30 car series. So this car traveled the world in the Super Cup series. Wow, and David, how did you come across this? Um, this car actually belongs to Orbit Racing, uh, which I am an employee of. Uh, so we uh, preserve and maintain these cars at this level. Um, uh, at, this car hasn't been in the public eye in over 15 years, so we thought it deserved to be out here and shown to the public. And I love that, that this is my first interview and this is the car that I come across. So I'm super happy about that. And what's even more better is you're preserving this. You haven't touched it. It hasn't been in your restoration. There's been a customization stuff to this. Yep, this is original. Keeping it just the way it is. Just like it is. Every little dust in there is original. <laughs> love it. Now let's look in detail. Okay, so why don't we look under the hood first? Um, under the hood is... Uh, we call this the front. So, uh, brake systems, there's a fuel cell under here, battery, ignition systems, pretty basic stuff. And what kind of an engine would this have? This is a 3.6 liter flat six engine that Porsche Motorsports built. Uh, it's got a six speed sequential transmission, we call it a gearbox. Yep. Uh, rear wheel drive, about 450 horsepower. Nice, it was made to race. Made to race. This is a factory built, purpose built race car. All this car's ever done was race. Now the Porsches are light. Do we know how light this one this is? This car weighs 2,600 pounds. Nice. So uh, a regular GT3 is about 3,800 pounds. Yep. So we cut a lot of weight out of these cars. And actually they come to us like this. This car comes built just like you see it from Porsche Motorsports in Germany. Wonderful, love it. Now cutting the weight off is that I know a lot of the things are missing from the inside. The interior is completely nothing in there. All you have is a seat. A uh, fire suppression system in a roll cage. So that's it. There's really nothing else in there. Now these days a lot of people are using carbon fiber to make the cars lighter. Especially right, so the, the, shell. Door, the doors, the hood and the deck lid oh, yeah. and the bumpers are carbon fiber. This is a tight weave pattern that's done by Porsche Motorsports. So this is the kind of this is the kind of doors that are being produced in the modern race cars also because they found out that it is the best bang for your buck so production on these doors is still very current this car was way ahead of its time as far as a race car went these were top performers in the series this is when Porsche was really dominating uh, Super Cup race um, we're really happy to have this car here today because it means a lot to us you know the story needs to be told well I can see that and you have so much knowledge and of course you work uh, for the industry as well now one thing that I do on runners radar is try to find out your story okay okay so David what is your passion when it comes to the classics and especially the European classics where does that come from okay so uh, I, I've been an auto technician for 35 years um, we got into Porsche uh, about uh, seven or eight years ago where uh, I was scrolling through the internet and found a body and decided that we were going to buy this body and build it so me and my wife built a car from scratch literally from a bare tub nice. and uh and i was uh, going to start tracking the car so the car needed to be inspected so we took it to orbit which is the company i work for now and they had to inspect the car and offer me a job okay so, so i started working for orbit and uh and then started working on race cars from there professionally so that's kind of like my and why story. the porsche why why start with the porsches I've always been attracted to the Porsche car. I think it's a really stable platform um, and, and it's super cool to look at. It is cool to look at. I gotta agree with you there, honestly. Absolutely love it. And when was the last time this had raced? This car hasn't been raced since 2008. 2008. And this is the first time it's being shown to the public? Yes. And why did you choose uh, this event right here? At well, we came last year with our, with our street car and uh, it's close to home. We live right in Jupiter Farms um, and uh, we decided to bring something different this year. Love it, absolutely love it. Appreciate this so much. Thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. You too.
and find out all there is to know and all for you to know to attend Wheels Across the Pond. Sydney, how's it going? Good. How are you today? Uh, I'm fabulous. Great day. Beautiful turnout. You're right. We're so lucky. We were uh, expecting a little bit of rain, but I think that uh, the rain got scared and uh, the sun was... Uh, you know, uh, at the rendezvous uh, for sure. And so far, look at that, it's amazing. It's what I say is when I come to an event, even if it is raining, it goes also, away and the sun's just starts that's shining. That's it, you're in Florida, you know how it is. <laughs> that's it, that's it, brilliant event, 15 years. That is correct. So basically last year we announced that I was gonna take ownership of the event. Neil Archer started the event in 2007. Last year we brought about close to 500 cars and we had about 4,000 spectators. And look at this, I mean, we're still missing a few cars. Uh, people are still rolling in. Look at the crowd, look at the cars. We are the largest British and European car show on the East Coast. And for example, look at this behind. We have a 1929 Royce Royce Phantom 1. This is an amazing car. And uh, right here, owner Guy Lewis. Hi there, Guy. How are you? Hey, how are you? I'm good. So I looked at your car before and it was absolutely brilliant. How could you not stop and stare at it? Uh, Early 20s? Yes, yes. It's, it's a 29, actually. One of the, uh, as, as the stock market was crashing in uh, 1929, this was rolling off the, uh, off the uh, floor at Springfield, Massachusetts, where Rolls-Royce had established a U.S. base You'll notice that there's a left-hand drive car, mm -hmm. which makes it very, very unusual, and built here in the in the United States for the U.S. market. Rolls-Royce clearly understood that their biggest market was going to be the United States, so they they came over and got a foothold early. Wow! And the the era that it was made in, after the stock market crashing, I mean, they were very hopeful because it is a luxurious car. It is. That's a that's a great point. This is actually the enclosed limousine. This was the largest Rolls Royce that uh, was made at the time. It's called a Lonsdale limousine, and you'll see it's got two jump seats in the back. It holds three across the back. Come on, guy, take me and my camera. Yes, Come along, yes, don't, take don't you go anywhere. I know you're very yeah, busy, so, uh, so stay the, with us. The uh, driver didn't have. I mean, he had room. She had room but not like it is today. I mean, no. they really didn't care about the driver <laughs> that much. What was important was the passenger, and that's where you got the room. So you'll see in the back, uh, it, you've got wow. uh, really just uh, tons and tons of space. You'll see the uh, woodwork. It's all got uh, silver um, surround. It's multiple different woods. Um, sheepskin, um, floor mats, uh, all worsted wool. Uh, wow. They really, Rolls-Royce really did know how to do it right. Oh, they really did, especially for 1929. I mean, this is such a step up from what else was happening during that time. What, what have we got here? What are you? So this was a, um, a warmer, it, you're, you're, and of course it's Rolls-Royce uh, uh, emblem. Uh, these cars didn't have heaters yep. and so you've got underneath the wool you've got a little uh, a, a little vent that the muffler the heat from the muffler wow. you can control the heat to enter the car wow. <laughs> and this car was of course built in Massachusetts it was originally bought in New York there was one man uh, dealer a Rolls-Royce dealer in Manhattan and the car was ordered new in New York and delivered new in New York that's fascinating. And how long have you had this for? So I've had this about um, maybe uh, 12 or 13 years. I, I took it recently, just to brag on Sydney a little bit. <laughs> I actually got it out of, uh, I decommissioned it a few years ago. Sydney also runs an unbelievable Concours d'Elegance in Palm Beach County. Um, and it's turned out to be really one of the most exclusive Concours on the East Coast. Uh, compared to Amelia Island and Pebble Beach and others. So I got this car out and really uh, showed it for the first time uh, at Sydney's event uh, a couple of three years ago. And um, I, can't, I can't say enough about what he's done in terms of the show. He's taken it, he's raised it to a, uh, the next, um, the cars and the people. It's just, it, it really It's such is a marketing. variety. It is yes. such a variety here. Yeah. And we're going to talk more about that. Now, Guy, 12 years ago, and in the 12 years, have you done some restorations? A little bit. You know, these cars, you have to, one, drive them, which I don't do enough, but you have to drive them. And you also have to take them out, and uh, there's always little bits and pieces that need to be re-chromed or touched up. 
Uh, they're just, uh, it, it's just the way these old cars are. But again, not to brag on Sydney, but he's got a great shop and I take a lot <laughs> of my cars up to it. Well, I'll definitely have to check that out one day, Sydney. Yes. One thing that caught me and now I'm learning through my channel, as everybody knows, is the steering wheel. What's going on in the center of that? Okay, very interesting. First of all, you notice the steering wheel's on the left-hand side. Yep. So it's a US built car, which makes it very, very rare. And then on the steering wheel hub itself, you've got, it's really fascinating. You can control the, um, the, the carburation, you can control the acceleration, and you can actually retard the distributor, make it move back and forth to make it run richer or leaner which, um, you know, is really fascinating. I've never seen that no, before in any of the classics. The older ones uh, tend to have it, the really older ones. You'll see it on the Ghost over there, for example. But it gave the driver maximum ability to adjust the car. And more um, control over the yes, drive, exactly. and I love that. <laughs> exactly, and in fact, the driver would always say, you'll see if I open this up, a, yep. an unbelievable toolkit, because the driver wasn't just a driver. He was expected to know how to show for the car, to take care of the passengers, and then if the car, what they called, failed to proceed. That's a nice <laughs> they, way to put right, it. Right, a nice way to say bro broke down. <laughs> then the driver was expected to get out and be a mechanic as well. Yep. Yeah. Wow, that, that's just awesome. Can we open that door of one course, more time? Sure, sure. And what was the engine for this? So this was a straight six. Um, massive though, it's an eight eight cubic uh, liter engine. It, it's got twelve spark plugs, so it had dual sparks, had dual coils. That's a lot for twenty nine. It is. It is. It was. It was a massive engine, and again, basically very similar to the Silver Ghost, yeah. which um, made the car, uh, or what they claimed was the the finest car built in the world. Obviously, it's a beautiful car. It's an absolute classic. Where does your passion come with the Rolls Royces? Guy? So um, I love the quality of the build. I love how exclusive and how uh, particular they are. Um, Rolls Royce is just a, a, a step up. Yeah. Listen, I, that's not to take anything away from Mercedes and and other uh, really great cars, but the the. Uh, uniqueness of a, of a Rolls Royce, the quality with which they built the car. Um, there's, I mean, there's no doubt that the guy who really designed it yep. was an engineer, Henry Royce. And his, his mantra, his saying was, we have the best car in the world. And, and um, I think in many respects, that's true. And that's where your love comes from. Now, last year, your car won the show. Is that what my understanding was? It was well, at least got one or two yeah, awards. Yeah, it, did, it did really good. Did it, you get the Queen's Award? Right. It was a. It was a, uh, the car we brought uh, last year was a 1925 Silver Ghost, uh, originally owned by Howard Hughes, who at the time was the richest man in the world. He was like the uh, Elon Musk, I yep. guess. <laughs> right of the of, uh, at the time. And uh, it's also a beautiful car, and I was happy to show it also. Well, I appreciate this so much, Guy. Thank you. Thank you for this. And Sydney, why don't yes. you come back with me? Now, there is awards at the show. Tell me yes. about the awards that's happening. So, absolutely. So, this year, we're changing things a little bit. We're not going to have third place. What we're going to do is going to be best in class and excellent in class. Okay. So, and the plates are absolutely gorgeous. And if you go and walk by that uh, Jaguar over there, you're going to see beautiful plate, a porcelain plate with a... Uh, Wheels Across Upon logo, and we're going to start the awards about 1.30. Okay. And so this year we have 37 classes. Last year we had 50 classes, but wow. this year I combined some of the classes. Obviously, if you do not have a minimum of three cars per class, uh, then we don't have a class. Okay. Uh, so, but this year I was able to combine a few classes. So technically we should have had this year, we should have about 45 classes. Wow. But I was able to combine a few of the cars to go uh, with some of the uh, classes, like some of the Jaguars, Porsche. Uh, some of the other cars. Rovers so we're also. expecting over 40 different types of classics here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah you can see all the Bentleys, Aston Martins, pre-war, post-war, Porsche, modern classics, BMW, modern classics, Mercedes-Benz, modern classics, all the Jags you can imagine. <laughs> 
Nash Metropolitan over there. Yep. This is cool. You don't have just one or two. You have one, two, two three, three, four. But you have a few over there. Uh, VW, of course. Yep. Uh, you have the buses over there, all the Triumphs over there. Uh, so it's amazing. We really have a variety of amazing cars. You know what's amazing, Sydney, is and your excitement. Thank you. you know, you've been doing this, and well, now you've taken over. And yes. I've just seen you running around on that buggy. You know, you've got a lot <laughs> on your hands. So I do appreciate this. Where does your hobby come from? Where, where are you? You know, the as a little kid. Uh, my father, my adoptive father, actually had a collection of cars with his partner. Uh, and in Europe growing up, I, I remember those cars, but I never really thought of anything that they were very special until yeah. later. I'm like, wait a second, we had a 33 Duesenberg, uh -huh. we had this, we had that. I was like, oh my gosh, I should have inherited those cars, yeah. you know? But I came here as a student and uh, basically uh, uh, my life changed um, and I stayed here and uh, uh, I did a master's in marketing and then I realized, you know what? I, I want to be surrounded around cars growing up, remembering my passion for cars. Yeah. Now I do realize what we had back then. Yes. Uh, and and you're, um, you're trying to keep that alive. Yeah. So I own Palm Beach Classics with the largest classic Mercedes-Benz restoration, uh, restoration shop on the East Coast. Okay. Uh, but also I founded in 2019 the Palm Beach Concorde d'Elegance. Guy was telling you about it earlier. Yes. And as of last year, I took ownership of this event, Wheels Across the Palm. So really exciting. We have a lot going on. Uh, we also have the Mini Me Foundation working with kids with cancer. Nice. Something I didn't tell you, uh, but this is exciting because we're really involved in the in the community here in Palm Beach County. Well, this is an absolutely brilliant turnout. I'm having a fantastic time. The crowd Great. is amazing, and yes. the cars are some that I've never seen before because I've been chasing the American classics. So Wonderful. this is going to be a great show. Yes, well, and glad to have you. Yes, people who want to get involved next year, where would they go to get so wheelsacrossthepond.com. Uh, that's the main site. It has all the information there. And uh, as you can see, we still have a lot of room. For the first time last year, we opened that area to, yeah. to outside for the Bentleys and Royce Royce and pre-war, post-war. But uh, we have a lot of room and we can continue and grow the event. So I wanted to limit uh, to 500 cars because yeah. then it gets really out of control. Yes. But uh, this year I wanted to see since it's me and my team for taking ownership of the event. Yes. Uh, and then next year I will be better prepared and now I can say, okay, full throttle. All so right, well, yeah. So this like year we have about 300 to 350 cars. Yep. And motorcycles. Yes. And you've got a great location. Yes, definitely. And the location again is? Carlin Park, Jupiter. Wonderful. Thank you so much. You're Appreciate welcome, it. of course. Thank you. learning about the classics and now here I am amongst beautiful MGAs. David, how's it going? It's going great. It's a beautiful day here. Beautiful day and you guys have a whole line of beautiful MGAs. Now tell me about that. What exactly do you have? This is a 60 MGA. It was uh, manufactured as a 1600 model. Mm -hmm. It's been modifying right. since I've had it. I've had, do you want to? Do you want to no, that's all right. I, I've, for the crowd, uh, the hill. <laughs> I've had the car since 1980. Okay. My father gave it to me. Yeah. And uh, it's been with me most of my life. And And did your father have it for the majority of the life? He life had it for a couple life? years. He had one when it, he had a new one when they first came out in the late 50s. Um, and then he bought this one in the late 70s. Okay. To kind of relive the magic and the magic wore off for him. <laughs> I was more of a, a car guy. He was more into airplanes. Okay. So he passed this on to me and I've had it ever since. He's no longer here, so I still have his car. That's awesome. <laughs> it is. You know, it is. That you still have this, so you've got memories sentimental, of Sentimental, lots of sentimental value. Lots yep. of sentimental mm -hmm. value, 100%. Mm -hmm. Now, the MGA here, what is some things that you can tell me as someone who doesn't know much about them? Um, they evolved from the T-Series, which there's one right over there. 
That was the next model. Wow, um, they were very different. That was a, a pre-war design that they carried over until yeah. the, the mid-50s when they went modern, and this was their first modern car design. It used a lot of the same parts underneath as this, as that car on this one, but had the newer body design on it. Very British. Very British. Love the colors. Now, the so please make your way up this direction. Have you seen something like this? Uh, it's what's called a, ro a roadster. Okay. A roadster doesn't have roll-up windows on it. Yep. So that's what defines this car. So, I mean, I get the roadster part, but mm -hmm. the roof, is this in addition or is that what it is? Tonneau cover. Yeah, this is what I use to keep the rain out. Okay. With this short windshield, which okay. is a modification. You can't put a top on it. No, no. So in the, uh, coming out of the factory, it would not have had that. Correct. Material. Correct. It would have just been a very. Although this was a factory option, you could buy factory. this if you liked. As I've done this car for racing on the weekends. Okay. It's a go. It's you know a little more aerodynamic with the short windshield on it. So tell me the racing part. Um, this is done in a style kind of to the weekend racer. When people would buy these new back in the day, they would strip them down. They would drive them to work all week because okay. you know that was your car and on the weekend you'd take the bumpers off and strip it down and make it as light as possible and go racing with it wow put it back together go to work monday <laughs> so it was easy to work on very easy very simple very simple yeah, very what simple. is the engine making it so simple it's a four-cylinder push rod okay. engine um pretty pretty basic Four cylinder, this was manufactured as a 1600, 1 1.6 liter. And currently this has an early MGB engine in it, which was the next model, so it's a little bit bigger engine. But it's it's physically the same on the outside. It's just it's bigger displacement. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. About, about uh, 90 horsepower with what I've done to it. And the car is about uh, between 1,800 and 1,900 pounds right now. Wow, so it's a light car. And it, pounds. Yeah, and it doesn't take a lot of horsepower to make it fun. It corners like a go-kart, and 50, 50 feels like 100, because wow. <laughs> you're seven inches, eight inches from the ground. Yes. So you feel everything. And you come home with a little uh, smell like exhaust and <laughs> a little grease in your hair. <laughs> but I'm loving the front end. I'm, yes. I'm a big sucker for grills. Grills, chrome. Chrome and um, yeah, I just I like uh, the way this has been done. It's very different, isn't it? Green this is the standard grill for, for that for this year. Yeah. Um, green, a dark color Porsche. The front is a little different. I, I removed the bumper. Okay, okay, so what, 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 We're not sure the color, but we are right sure tonight. That's, that's standard. This is what I've done to it. Left your lights on. This is more the race track version. Yeah, I like what you've done to it. You've right. made it very sleek, sir. Yeah, exactly. Very sleek. It was in preferred parking. Well, that makes sense. 911 preferred parking. Now it all ends up. Yeah, some color. Red is perfect color for this car. It's called Don't Hit Me Red. Don't Hit Me Red. <laughs> it's Don't Hit Me Red, but all it's doing is drawing as much attention for people to come to you. So. <laughs> if they see it, they won't hit me. <laughs> The dash. The dash. All that is period correct. The seats have been changed. Uh, the stock seats were kind of kind of flat, so you would kind of very cushiony. So you would kind of it's like sitting on the couch. You didn't have any side support. So I've changed it to that, and that actually lowers the seating position too for for the short windshield. And the steering wheel has been replaced. There's a stock one over there. That steering wheel is about 17 and a half inches, and it. It's yeah. difficult, yeah. but that was so everyone could steer it. The, no matter what your your build was, that yes. the steering wheel was big enough that everybody could turn the wheel. Okay. Men, women, hopefully not children, but who knows back then. Who knows? <laughs> what about you, David? You like the British classics? Oh yes, been with me all my life. So this is the only one I've kept. I've had a lot of cars. This is the only one I've kept. Yeah. Oh, it's brilliant, and I appreciate this. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I also want to thank each one of you guys for respecting the fact that you are staying here until the awards, and I'll try to leave before. Thank you. That means a lot to me. So.
for some of you guys that may have so a this friend that left early and maybe upset. So I've got some questions. You, so I want to know please. what it's what's going through and what customizations has happened. Gerard, how are you today? I'm fine, doing fine. I love okay. your classic. Thank you. What year is it from? It's a 1972 MGB GT. Okay. And how long have you had this for? Uh, around three years. Three years. Now, you were telling me, and this I want to emphasize to everybody, that you restored mm -hmm. this yes. full frame of restoration, yes. and it took you one year. One year and three months. One year and three months, just to be exact. All right. What was the state? Um, well, it was in a flood originally about 10 years ago. Okay. And in North Carolina. And somehow it ended up in Florida, and I got it out to the junkyard. Wow. Uh, when I got it, um, everything was um, waterlogged. Like, it was, the engine was all rusted, the transmission, the rain. I had to change everything and rebuild the engine. Um, and um, how did you find it? I mean, you didn't find it in the lake somewhere, did no, you? No, <laughs> no, I was just driving by, and I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, and I went to the people, and I bought it. Wow. And um, I took it, and I started stripping it, and I uh, started working on it. Um, the, the longest part of the whole job was the, the paint. The paint, of course. Yeah, because I took it to the body shop and the guy keep putting it aside, putting it aside, and it took a couple of months to paint. But mechanically, it was no problem because you know, I, know, I, I know exactly where everything goes and how to rebuild them. And where does that come from? Uh, well, I grew up um, working on cars and I've been in the military for 32 years as a mechanic, so in the U.S. Army. So I know about uh, main mechanic and maintenance and stuff like that. Well, thank you for your service, sir. Yeah. Okay, let's get you over to the car. First things first, we have... Okay, yes. Race. Now, if you notice, some of the MGs do not have this. This no, is this is a, a hood from an MGC. There are different types of MG. There's MGA, which is the first red one you had. They have MGB, which is one like that over there, right? And they have MGC. Okay. Now, mine is not a C. But I have the hood of a C. Okay. Right, that is how it have the bulge and this thing. It's a B with a C hood. Okay. MGC hood. I love the, the style of the hood, that is why. All right? And the reason also, I put air condition in the car, so I needed space to, to accommodate the air condition for the hood. With the regular hood, it, the engine would not close because it was too high. So this, this hump here give me the clearance for the air condition in the car. If you want, I could open the hood and you can see Absolutely. the inside. What is um, this other race? This is for the carburetors. For the carburetors. Uh, so when I open it, you'll see it. Okay, let's do that. You see here, you have twin SU carburetors and you see that is what this hump is here for. All right. right. And the additional of the hood is because of the air condition system. I had to raise the uh, the alternator up to accommodate the air condition system. Because when it was uh, factory stock, it did not have the air conditioning. No, they didn't. No, they don't make them with the air condition. Right. But for Florida, you need air conditioning. Oh yes, sir, you did. Right. Can't do without air conditioning. Wow, brilliant. And what was the engine again? You said you. Had? It's an 1800 cc MGB engine. Um, have slight modification. I have a port and polish head with a mile road cam. Right, uh, so I get a little more RPM at a, a, a high range RPM, right? which I normally run on the highway around 75 80 miles an hour. Yeah, because this is a small car. Yeah, right. It's a large car. Right. But it's a pretty, it has some, it has a little bit of weight on it, and I, I changed the front. Okay, well, I Right, I have the Sibering front, which is uh, uh, originally from the MGB race cars. And on the back also. And um, is this period correct to have the four headlights? Yeah, some of them do come with the two headlights, yes. Okay. Yeah. And in the back here also. Here, I have the CB ring back also where it's smooth so that I could get the airflow of the car so that I don't have any restrictions from the bumpers or anything like that. All right. Now the dashboard, let me, let me move that yellow cloth. Mm -hmm. If you come inside here, you can come this way. 
Now the dashboard is not the correct dashboard. This has had a padded dashboard for um, American uh, in the United States for safety standards. They made the car with a padded dashboard. But as much as the car was in a flood and the dashboard was all rotted, I took the, the padding off and I just covered it with um, regular um, vinyl mm -hmm. and I made my own dashboard. Like I have my uh, GPS, my flat screen in it and everything. So I changed the whole dashboard up completely from original MG because I built the car to suit me. And what is it about these that you like so much? Oh, uh, well, I grew up with them and uh, as a kid and I always had them. So, yeah. I, uh, you know, uh, just in love with it. Yeah. 2003 Aston Martin. Very nice. And okay. Joseph Lumet. And you're having a good time here at Yes, uh, of course. It, have you been coming for many years? Yes. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. beautiful. Thank you so much, Ryan. Okay, thank I appreciate you. This. Everybody, I do like the Nash Metropolitans. Now, throughout the car shows that I have been chasing, I came across the one which was the P. It was named the Point the P. I'm going to put a link to it as well. It was super cute and they had customized it, it was green, I liked it, it was very cute. I'm walking past and now I see two Nashes right here as well. So what's your name? Walter Hamilton. Walter, and what have you got with you? This is a 1957 Nash Metropolitan Coupe, which the one next to me is a convertible. Awesome. The Nashes are very unique looking cars. What is it that you like about them? Ask my father, he bought it. Okay, so it's you've had it for how long now? Uh, 1975. It's a long time. And has there been any restorations to this? That's the plate. Uh, yeah, my dad did a lot of body work when he bought the car home. Um, it's been off the road for 20 years. It, it just got back on the road five, six years ago. Okay. Uh, where the had some more body work done. It got a paint job. And a lot of rubber components were replaced. And this belonged to your dad? Yes. Now we can see he, in loving memory of Al Hamilton. When did you get the car, sir? Uh, well, how long have you had it for? The in well, the car has been in me and my dad. Yeah, me and my sister's possession since 1996. That's when he passed away. Okay. And I'm guessing you grew up in this, or you had a lot of memories? Yeah. A lot of memories. One of the things that I like to do here on Rana's Radar is we like to get the stories. We love the cars, and we always get pictures and good footage of the cars. But more than that is we like to get the background history. Now, I like the fact that this car belonged to your dad. And he had it for, how, many, how long did he have it for? Uh, 75 to 96. Wow, it's a long time. And then now you've got it as well. Me and my sister. You and your sister. And I love the fact you guys share it. So how does that work, sharing the car? <laughs> uh, well, she had it for the first 20 years. I guess I have it for the next 20. <laughs> <laughs> that works, 20 is a long time. <laughs> you must really get along. <laughs> All right, so tell us, uh, so what engine does the 56 Nash have? So this is a 1200 B series, and the uh, 1200 B originally had about 42 horsepower. Uh, I think in 1958, I want to say the next car over has a 1500 that increased the horsepower to about 52, 54 horsepower. So the history of the Met, uh, this is basically supposed to be a, a second car. For the home in the 50s you know for the, you know, the woman stayed at home back then yep take care of the kids take care of the house and take the kids to school and, you know go to the store yep just to have a second inexpensive car in the, in, in the household and that's the amazing thing about these classics is that they were just ordinary cars when they were first brought out of course and now they're so loved oh yeah and especially at all these car and shows the, we see uh, it uh the other thing that was ahead of its time is the fuel economy okay uh, back in the day it was 40 miles to the gallon and it would have a small tank, I'm I guessing. Love your shirt. Uh, I think the original tank was nine gallons. Nine gallons. N nine, nine or ten. Okay. Well, let's have a look inside, because I do oh. like. Yeah. Let's have a look. And this has been restored, you said. What about the inside? Has it been done anything to it? The interior was redone in the 70s by my mother. Your mum did it. This just keeps getting better and better. Okay, so. 
your mum restored the inside. And I love it when ladies get involved. So does she always like cars and classics? Or? That's mine. But oh. mine, mine oh. is in the body shop. And especially at that time, in the 70s, she was she did the interior of the car. She's the one. She's the one who got my father into Metropolitans because her, fa her father, my grandfather, used to sell them. He had a, he had a, a Nash Rambler dealership and they sold Metropol he sold Metropolitans as well. So she knew her way around the car and especially right. around the Mets. And then she got my dad into Mets. And then, and then your dad got you. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Okay, let's have a look at the inside here. It wasn't by choice, but you know, inheritance is an inheritance. But now you've grown to love it because of the memories. Oh, I've always loved her. I used to sit in the back seat right there. There's a back seat? I, I didn't even think there was a back seat. <laughs> Let's Not much. Anything, anything past the age of uh, 10 years old is pretty much useless. Legless children. Legless children, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times the back of my head made contact with that rear glass. <laughs> wow, wow, absolutely love it. Look, look at the back seat, everyone. This is where Walter would sit. <laughs> Any other classics that you like, sir? I'll be here again next year. The two cars I adore are above my tax bracket. Mm -hmm. 56 Thunderbirds. Oh, yeah. And a uh, 57 Bel Air Chevy. <sighs> oh, yeah. Did everybody hear that? That's my favorite car, too. And uh, I do like the Rolls Royce Silver Ghost from the uh, 20s and 30s. Oh, that they is, are nice. That is a classic car. That is a classic car. And Absolutely. I'm hoping that we're going to see some today. Uh, last year, they said there was one here mm -hmm. from, I think, from the 20s. That's okay. Good. She said there'd be parked right back here. Okay. Well, this has been lovely. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I'm just glad I had the answers to the questions. Oh, you did fine. <laughs> Thank you.